but this this is just two D two dimensions. So T depends on X and Y, right? And now basically you assume that you can write uh, this function as a sum of separable function. Say um, which one is uh, a function x times a function of y. Right? Suppose that you should add a notation to indicate how what, what you sum like x of i, y of i, and sum of i. Right? But uh, you can consider one at a time, and then finally you just add all the separable solution together, add as, as many as you want. Uh, basically, usually you add uh, the terms that are given by complete function, complete basis, just like what we do in chapter five. Stuff in chapter five. And you figure out that these are like the basis function of, of, of a complete set, then you can just add, add up all the function you want to basically to fit the boundary condition. And that uh, that would be the summation. So uh, the, so for now, you can actually just forget about the summation or forget about the index and just consider one term. So this is just capital X and capital Y and put it back to here, right? And this Laplace is basically just this one, right? And then, so we substitute this X, capital X time capital Y into here. So, and because uh, the first derivative is with respect to X, so just basically the derivative of this capital X and Y is just uh, a factor, you can hold it out. So the first term is capital Y, that depends on Y, and the second derivative of capital X. Now, it just depends on one variable, so this is just the ordinary derivative, not a positive derivative. And likewise, for the second one, only take the data over this capital Y, X becomes a, a factor. Y. Now that is not so small. Okay. Can you follow it? Okay. And the last step is the, to divide the whole equation by t itself or the, by the by the product of x and y. So it divided this by x, y, divided x and y. Okay. And basically cancel y, let's cancel x for the second term to be one of them. It's a function of y. On the function x, sorry, cancel <laughs> y is a function of x. E squared x, dx squared, plus one over y, plus cancel x, just, just have y here, d e squared y, d e y squared, that equals to zero. Is that okay? So, now the, the next argument is that uh, you have two, two terms. One is a function of x, the other is function of y. If you like, you can move one term to the other side also. But the argument is the same. If you want these two terms to add up to zero, or this equals to the minus the other term. And this, these are function, but they are function of different variables. And the only possibility that you can find a solution like that is that um, they, they are just equals to constant, and then these co two constants add up to one. So you can set like uh, whatever constant you want to set. Uh, like, I don't know what, what we call say. This is a constant. Uh, let's, let's say this is, uh, and the constant can be positive or negative. Say, uh, so you assume this is positive. That becomes like this is k squared. This term, the first term is k squared. And the second term, in order to add up to the zero, this must be minus k squared. 
Okay. You can assume the first term to be positive and the second term must be negative. And vice versa, if this is minus k squared, this becomes k squared. Okay. But, but the, uh, it, it doesn't matter which is which. Okay. And uh, in, the, in our case, it seems like uh, because there are symmetry uh, between x, we put it, it actually, for, for later convenience, Seems like this is uh, negative is better, and this become positive. Okay, so then you have two equation. One is this this equation. This two uh, this equals to that, and then this equals to that, right? So uh, the two equations uh, are fun, uh, elementary because you have seen this equation before. The first equation is p squared capital X, small x squared equals to minus k squared. Multiply x, capital X to the other side. Right, you have seen that this equation before, right? Right, you know the solution? Cosine sine, yeah, right? This is x. As the function x will be some constant times the cosine uh, kx because uh, it's, it's a constant k and then plus b sine. Right, and you can check this these uh, solution by taking a second derivative and each derivative say cosine becomes a negative sine. So I become cosine and then take another derivative and that becomes minus cosine this is minus sine and times k squared so that will satisfy this equation okay and now so far so good uh, that's for x now the y equation is the same but, uh, except this is positive right and now what is what what is the solution for this one? All right. Either I, uh, but either I would be just, just this one, just called, just exponential function. You can either use exponential function or, so you have a choice. You can use exponential function and you know that uh, exponential function, the two exponential function plus or minus argument. And, Add up to the hyperbolic function. So, so either either C E Y C E minus or C cos. Okay, that's okay. Don't forget cos K Y C C. Okay. So E does are fine. Which one is better depends on the boundary condition, which is easier to use. Okay. And now uh now we're almost done. This is part B or part this is part is there part C or part part D is to solve, part B is to solve everything then. Okay, now uh, we can use this, this to solve the, this question. Now remember these are all normalized. Normalized uh, variables. The boundary condition is this is one, 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 all. And the variable is T. Now instead of uh, solving T, we, we might as well solve uh, the uh, what we call the uh, this this uh, temperature difference, right? Because the boundary condition for the temperature difference will be easier than this one. And what we mean by the temperature difference is delta, right? This delta T is uh, is now this is the this is at the at the top, but the Generally, is it 
we cover it. So delta t, if you define it, is uh, t minus t1 over t1. Okay. So the up, upper uh, limit change to t2 minus. Uh, uh, this is originally is t2 minus t1 is the t, t tube uh, on the top. So we want to get the temperature difference. So basically, in uh, uh, defining this temperature difference, uh, the equation you can, instead of solving the Laplacian T equal to zero, you can solve the Laplacian delta T equals to zero. Okay, because uh, all these are just uh, just shifting a constant, a constant, and a passing of constant is zero, so you can always add zero. So this is still true. Um, so this is still satisfied. The uh, Laplace equations, all these are still correct. Okay, and now the the geometry or the boundary condition for this problem is easier because now this uh, in the Normalized variable x, y. This is from zero to one, zero to one. Now delta, you're solving delta t, and delta t is a zero here, zero, zero, zero here, and then this is uh, basically uh, this is just that this that t two minus t one, t two minus t one. That's the top boundary, right? Um, whatever you call it later, you can call it, this is R or R2, the, whatever you call it, okay. You have to understand, so now the boundary conditions are easier because they are, these are zero, all three, and then just uh, a constant on the top. All right, is that okay? So, um, so now the, the idea is, uh, this is just one term in here, uh, whatever I did here, one term. We want to sum over all the terms that uh, satisfy the boundary condition. And one at a time, uh, x and y. Right, um, right. So x will be, uh, but they they said this they have the same k. Remember the y function have the same. Yeah, you need to pop the product of this capital X and capital Y with the same k. But this k, the, you have a choice for the for the k, and that is the choice is to satisfy the boundary condition easier. And so not all k will will, will satisfy this. Uh, the boundary condition because uh, you, you need to decide and coincide. And because of the boundary condition that uh, x is zero on at this little x equals zero and one, so both boundary is capital X is zero. And now the t, delta t is zero, but you want this, this, uh, the, the, it's zero at x equals to t is two, zero and one. So basically you want this function to be zero at this two point, right? And so that will mix uh, this delta t to a zero, right? And the easiest way uh, to find a complete expression that represents this is uh, using the sine function. Just use the sine because at x equals zero, sine is automatic zero, but not cosine, cosine is one. So it's much easier just to use the sign. Okay, basically now you're doing the for the Fourier sign series. Okay. Just use the use the because we learned about Fourier series before, so it's easier. So uh, just use the Fourier sign series. So basically uh, x will be just the sign term, some constant b and sign. But not not all k we said is because it has to be one at uh, at uh, x. That has to be zero at uh, little x equals to one. So this must be two pi times 
minus uh, two pi times a, a integer that m times this. m will be one start from one. Right, because uh, you don't include zero here because uh, you, you see, put zero here, this capital X is all that is totally zero that you got the, this uh, trivial solution, so you don't include n equals zero. Just all the positive integer, and we, we don't use negative integer because negative integer is just uh, linear dependent on the positive integer. This is the negative of that, so you don't need to use negative integer. So you get all the positive integer. So you get the, all the sign here. So this is just one term. So, so you can use this M as the notation for this, this term of solution. So M, this is why X of M. So you have X of M given by this form and the coefficient, you can also indicate this as B sub M. Okay. Now, the, once you choose this for a given M, the x, uh, the, the k here is the factor in front of x, so this will be a k. But then this is uh, for the m mode, so it's k is n, right? So the corresponding solution for y, you can see this was m. Now, uh, now we also have the two terms for the y generally. But then you have a bounded condition at y equals zero that you uh, uh, that require that to be zero. So for cos at y equals zero is not zero, only sinc is zero. So you can actually just keep this uh, the sinc term. So this n sinc and k is two point n. Okay, so now and finally, this delta, delta t, uh, it normalizes, it normalizes where it's given by the sum over m from one to infinity. We have these of m times, um, these of m, actually you can set one of them to, to be one because we always multiply together. These of m, so these of m, Oh, this is two point m. Right. So, uh, but uh, we are not done yet because uh, there's one boundary condition to match. So now th this form, you can see that it matched boundary condition at uh, x equals zero, x equals to one, and y equals zero. Because of that, these are the sine function we satisfy these two, sinh function we satisfy the body. Now we have one more boundary condition at the uh, y equals you want to match, right? So basically, it is uh, you, you need to uh, one more equation to solve, right? So, uh, so basically, that substitute y equals to one, right? And then that would be delta t at t, which is uh, what we call this R2 factor. So let me go back to here because some space here. So last equate, last uh, condition is R2, which is just this uh, t2 minus t1 divided by t1 is equals to summation of infinity. M. And now this is a this is a function of x only because you set y equals to one. So that becomes sinh of two by m, which is a value. So whatever this value is depends on m. Right? This is just a sinh function at a certain value. And then sine of two by two by m times. Okay, now this is in the form of the, a Fourier sign extension. 
now you can go back to your to your series chapter <laughs> and look up the formula. So this is like uh, you have a function which now is just a constant. You want to expand it using a Fourier sign series. So this b sub n times this sinh two pi m that becomes the coefficient of this uh, coefficient in this Fourier sign series expansion. Um, so that would be given by the inverse of the Fourier sign series. So there's a formula that that's basically involved multiplied all this R2 function by, by the same function sine 2 pi m x and then integrate and then multiply by a, a coefficient. The only thing left is to figure out what the coefficient is. It doesn't take too long to figure out, or you can look up the formula of the, of the Fourier series chapter, right? And then solve for this one. That would give this, this bracket. This is b sub n times this sin function. And that will give you the b sub n value because this is this is a given value, the sinh function. So once you have the b sub m, figure out and put it back to here. That would be your solution. Although you say in a in a series solution, it's a Fourier series solution, but it's still a solution. And sometimes uh, the best you can do is uh, a uh, Fourier series solution. And sometimes occasionally you can sum the Fourier series back to a, a an elementary function, but not always. Right. Is it clear enough so that the process? <laughs> so I'm, I'm leaving it that the last step for you to do, which is elementary. So go back to your previous series chapter. That would be my uh, last suggestion. Okay. <laughs>